We want to talk with you about the books that feed your imagination and the vices that spark your soul. We drink, we curse, we read things. Come sit by us. Expect no judgment, just good times. Welcome to Paper and Vices. Books reviewed, vices indulged. Mature content warning. I am Victoria Papers. Trying to look under the window that has Lee's face in it to see things on the browser window behind it. Is that what you were trying to do? I'm like, why is she yeah, ducking down? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've pre-gamed. It's okay. <laughs> But did it work is the question. Like when you leaned your head down, did you, were you able to see underneath the window? <laughs> well, also I was trying to see around the microphone, to be fair. Okay. It's like both. And okay. so I'm just, it's not that I'm that stupid and drunk to confuse a flat window on a computer. It's that I didn't differentiate your face from the microphone, which now that that's out of my mouth, that's still pretty fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> So what happened is we recorded an episode and then we were record. We decided we were like, are we going to record more or are we going to go to bed? And our decision was we were going to drink more and then record. So this is this is the what you need to yeah. know to listen to this episode. <laughs> yes, <laughs> secret. We uh we record episodes in batches because we have a lot of shit to do. Yep. I can work all day and you can still look at my house and be like, she's lazy because this is messy. It's like, no, even the cat makes a mess. Ah, (laughs) my husband really doesn't other than the whole like clothes on the floor thing. Like, and, and like he has a little corner of the office and he keeps it clean. The kid and the cat and also myself, because I give no fucks because I know I'm going to clean up my own mess. Yeah. You would think I would give more, but no, no, No. I give none. Yeah. There's not a fuck to be given. Um, I've tried to give fucks about cleaning. And I do. Like, when it's messy, it's messy and it annoys the shit out of me. And sometimes I have to stop everything that I'm doing to just clean. But, like, my I'm notorious for being messy in the sense that, like, I'll leave glasses out. Or, like, mm-hmm. I'll put something mm-hmm. down. I'll see, like, a pot, like a napkin on the counter that needs to just go in the trash. And I'll see it, and I'll be like, I'm going to pick that up and throw it in the trash. And then I'll walk away from it, and it's still there four hours later. Because, so. like, <laughs> I think it's ADHD brain, because I definitely have ADHD brain, and yeah. you may or may not have ADHD yes. brain. But it's like, if you fucking give a mouse a cookie, god damn it, now I have to clean the whole kitchen. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Like... I'd rather do it while I'm cleaning the kitchen than stop what I'm doing, whether that's walking to the other side of the house or whatever. Yes. Like, yeah. it's it's this thing. I'm not proud of this, but this is also why I want my office and the kitchen very much to be on the same floor of my house. Hmm. I I get like two or three days worth of coffee cups up here. And then they all go down at once. Yep. Because when they go down, I have, and it's not like when I put a different dish in the sink, but when I take my coffee cups or my overnight water cups downstairs, oh no, there's too many dishes in the sink. Now I have to do the dishes. Yep. And so (laughs) if I don't want to do the dishes, not going to take my coffee cups down. And this makes no sense to neurotypical people or even like autistic as fuck people like my husband. Uh, But it makes sense to ADHD brains. Yep. <laughs> if I do one small task to make things a little bit better and a little bit easier later, my brain is going to latch onto that shit. And then I'm just a passenger. And I don't want to. <laughs> uh, it drives my husband crazy. <laughs> he's like, what? Why? And he always tells me about the, he's like, he's like, it's like the movie Signs. How that girl has the, bu- like the glasses of water, like all over the house. Cause it has amoebas in it. <laughs> It's like, it's like, does this have amoebas in it? What is wrong with this glass of water? I'm yes. like, I need a fresh one. That is from I'm last night. I'm doing a science. Leave me the fuck alone. Yes. No. <laughs> it's more like, the stairs in my house are hateful. They are. They are so, and like, I thought for a really long time, just because I had lived in Florida for forever and didn't have any stairs, and... I'm a fat ass. So like, oh, that's why I hate my stairs. No, they're like two inches steeper than regular stairs mm-hmm. for reasons. And <laughs> I, I just like if my water cup is upstairs and I am downstairs, I'm getting a new one. Yep. 
<laughs> because, ow. <laughs> it's 14 extra steep stairs straight the fuck up. There's only a handrail on one side because, sure. <laughs> Last week, I tripped going up the stairs because I was trying to carry a full laundry basket in one hand and a full cup of coffee in the other. Oh, and I, no. t- I didn't spill my coffee or the laundry. But what I did was I jammed my toe into the very edge of the step, like my no. big toe. And I pushed my toenail back. And when I took my nail polish off, like a week later, there's like this huge gross purple bruise because apparently it bled. Because my stairs are dumb as fuck. So, like, you know, it's a health hazard and shit. I'm not going upstairs to get a cup. Oh, my God. And if I bring all the cups downstairs and traverse these stairs of shittiness, I might as well just do the dishes. I've already done the hero part. (laughs) I am drunk. (laughs) What are you drunk on? (laughs) Tell us what you're drinking. Pumpkin beer. Like, goddamn 10% ABV pumpkin beer. It's so good, though. 10% is really, I mean, to be honest, it's two beers in one. So you're basically drinking two beers. And I have not drank outside of recording sessions in uh, quite a bit. I didn't even, I don't think I drank much when we were in Savannah. I think I had like one drink. So I've been, I wasn't trying to do dry January, but I was like on a bunch of new meds. And then I had like really hard time with the migraine and it like if i can take pain medication or alcohol usually it's pain medication uh but you shouldn't mix those things because you should not livers yeah Yeah. (laughs) so i haven't drank much lately and it doesn't take very long for me for my tolerance to go to nothing and so uh all that said to say not sober (laughs) not (laughs) I could not do a late Taco Bell run right now. <laughs> you could have also, it delivered. Actually, no, actually, I couldn't because our fucking Taco Bell closes at 8 p.m. Oh, fuck that, yeah. man. What are the drunk I mean, people supposed to eat? I don't know. Like, our McDonald's isn't even open until midnight anymore. Ugh. And, and like, okay, for well, I kind of know. Like, living wage, totally, yes. Fuck it, if they won't pay you, don't be there. I can... <laughs> I can buy taquitos at Trader Joe's. I have a toaster oven. I can make do. But you guys are losing all of the drunk people business. Just fucking pay your people more. Like at some point, the only fast food place within two hours that is open past 10 p.m. is, well, there's two. I'm sorry. There's a Wendy's that's open until midnight, which we have eaten from before. Yes. And... Like, 15 minutes away down, just past the line in another city, there's Popeyes. Mm. That's it. McDonald's closes, Taco Bell, Bojangles, PDQ, Burger King. Like, all the trash food you want when you are unsober or out of fucks or both (laughs) is not open. (laughs) And it's like, what? You're you're missing, like, how... How does a fast food restaurant stay in business if you don't serve drunk people on Friday and Saturday? I don't understand. <laughs> At least until 11, I feel like. Yeah. 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 Like, Taco Bell did this whole fourth meal thing, and they were like, eh, we don't want to pay people, so we're just going to nope the fuck out of that. And I'm just like, that's not cool. And yeah. they took away the Mexican pizza. I don't, I don't know what's happening. Fuckery. This is not about books. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> It's not. It's all going to be on Patreon. Well, what are you reading? Maybe we can redeem it. Mm. I am reading a book is what I'm reading. <laughs> are you crying? A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Oh, man. What am I reading? I am currently reading Midlife Witch Hunter, which is Shannon Mayer's 40 Proof series, book six. And it's about uh, this woman named Brie in her 40s. She gets divorced. She moves back to Savannah when her grandma dies. She has supernatural powers. There's this whole supernatural 
fey goblin underworld and the entrance to the fey world is through the fountain in forsyth park and she runs all over savannah in one of the books like a bunch of cool shit ha- actually happens in the tunnels that run under the city mm-hmm. and it's a really good series like if you liked nancy drew as a kid and now you like things with magic this is a very good yes. series um Aww. there's a bunch of hot guys doesn't really work with any of them so far which is always nice but she has her crew of found family which is amazing what i really like about this one is like they clarified it i think in book five it might have been the end of book four one of the issues in her marriage was that she could get pregnant but she couldn't stay pregnant she had fertility yeah it does suck a lot it was very sad and shannon mayer doesn't make it better in the end uh, you find out that what her supernatural lineage and powers are. Uh, basically, she walks too close to death to create life. So there's not going to be oh. a magic fix for her infertility. Yeah. Her happy ending may or may not include a dude, but it's not going to include her magically having a baby. And I really appreciate when there's not a magic fix for shit like that. But yeah. The Witcher does it too. Yennefer doesn't ever get to have a baby. Um spoiler (laughs) but it was it was it was made very clear at the end of season one like she literally had a complete histo she's not having children yeah and so i what what i really like about this is that you know her happy ending isn't going to include a baby and that doesn't necessarily make it sad um and it may or may not include a dude but if it doesn't it doesn't necessarily mean she's going to be lonely or want for company or purpose Um, I think there's one book left before the series finishes. And it's not like the most serious, deep, thought-provoking literature. It's a good series to pick up and read through. It's interesting. There are mysteries. There's action. There's a lot of Advil. Um, (laughs) So, you know, they're solid threes all the way through. And... If I were the kind of person that handed out five stars willy nilly, I, I would definitely give them five stars. Um, but they're solid reads, and it's really nice to have fantasy series that aren't about perky titted twenty somethings. Yes, and it's not just Bree who isn't perfect. Like one of her friends is a fish lady. She's a, she's a river maiden, and she's she's not very pretty. Uh, one of her friends is Bigfoot, and and he's handsome when he's in dude form, but he's also weirdly large and very shy, and he's Bigfoot. Like not everybody yeah. is super pretty. Like if you read anything by Sarah J. Moss, everyone is so beautiful. Oh my god, I want to lick them, even their scars. That's fine. <laughs> like that's that's her vibe. Is that like everything is so pretty? It's probably not real, but it is real because you're in a magical realm. Um, of course cool you know whatever that's, there's a place for it there's a place for it it's not personally my very favorite style of writing but a lot of people really like it because it's complete escapism mm-hmm. and that's that's fine but it's nice to see a woman not be a size two mm-hmm. not be perfect physically she's in her 40s she might be in her late 30s no she's in her 40s And she kicks ass and she takes names and she does amazing shit. And then she goes home and she takes Advil. And if she doesn't keep walking, her body seizes up and she can't move anymore. So there's there's one part in this book where she's like, I was still in pain, but I knew if I stopped walking, I wouldn't get back up again for a while. I know that feeling. That is, that is legit. That is what happened to (laughs) us after we went to the Biltmore. All of us were like, well... Just stay on the couch. Sit on the couch. Just stay on the couch. <laughs> the couch. This is the best couch we've ever had in an Airbnb. Let's just stay on the couch. We have ice cream. It's couch. Couch. <laughs> um. And so I appreciate that. Um. And they're they're well written. The world is well done. Shannon Mayer in general is just a really good writer, and she really writes these episodic things that are many series books that just. I've never actually held a physical copy in my hand, so I don't know if it's a paperback, but when you read it, you think, oh, I'm reading a fantasy paperback. And Yeah, like, God... kind of like the sucky thing. Yeah, you just kind of exactly. nice to have around. Yes, yeah. like, God okay. bless the fantasy paperback set in the South. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I need to um, read her because I have not. I've I've seen so many things by her come across my feed. I've heard you talk about her. Like I've seen her come up a lot, and I just haven't made my way to her yet. But I definitely want to add her to my TBR list this year. Yeah, so. she's a solid writer, and she puts together. She's really good at putting together a large cast of characters without making you forget about any of them and without making you not give a shit about any of them. Yeah. And she's also really good at like reminding you without doing two pages of backstory, re redoing what we just did in the last book of what happened in the last book without like it, it doesn't. It, she's really good at doing recaps or reminders of who characters and, and the last part of the story is without actually giving you the two pages of recap which people mm -hmm. who binge read absolutely loathe yeah like they're totally necessary but even when alona andrews does it i'm like eh, i'm gonna skip this page i know what happened yeah. i know what's yeah. going to happen i i just know a lot of things happening because i've read <laughs> these books 87 times and yeah. she's she's good at doing a big cast of characters without making any of them flat or two-dimensional and yeah. you give a shit about all of them like gonna be totally honest i like had to go back and read notes in the second chapter of the crescent city book because it's just like it's infant dumping like the first crescent city book and i'm like i don't remember all these fucking people i don't i don't remember what yeah. happened <laughs> like these i've are... actually thought about possibly going back and rereading the first one yeah but i'm just like eh, i don't know we'll like see. that's not really a spoiler that's just I don't know why she did this series that way, but she's writing this series in a very different style than she's written the other ones. Sarah J. Moss, not Shannon Eyre. Yeah. Would you say yeah. that the Crescent City series is different stylistically and character development-wise from the Quarter Thorn and Roses series? Like, does it feel different? Absolutely. Absolutely. It feels completely different. Yeah. Like, I mean, you could tell it's the same author, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to think if it's fair to say that I could tell it's the same author because she's got similar... To I don't know. The world building is just so different. It is. And I would even the character development is different. It's just... I don't know. I would There's say... elements there. If I didn't know who wrote them, I would never think that the person who wrote Nesta Archeron also wrote Bryce Quinlan. Like, yeah. Unless she wrote Bryce Quinlan like when she was in her first year of college and she wrote Nesta when she was teaching literature. <laughs> like they're just so <laughs> different. They're very different. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, it's one of those times where it's like, you can have an author that you really like some of their work. And then it just shows you how distinct and non overlapping those worlds are. Cause they're written so differently. Yeah. And, and which in a way I guess is a is a compliment to the author even if you don't really like one of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's kind of like, oh, you've just built two completely different worlds. Yeah. So, go yeah. you. <laughs> so... Yeah, go you. Um uh, but yeah. it's not even just that they're different worlds. It's just the the depth of character in the characters is so different. And, you know, good for her. I don't begrudge her any of her monies. Um yeah. But Bryce Quinlan is just at the end of book 1. I don't know about book 2. Because I, ju I just started it. But at the end of book one, I'm like, still, like, I can appreciate how much effort she put into the world, but I can't mm -hmm. root for Bryce. She's just Bella Swan with bigger titties. <laughs> so we'll see. Hopefully book two makes her, like, fully fleshed out and awesome. Because you know what? Nesta sucked in the first two books. Yeah. So yeah, it's fine. For sure. What are you reading? <laughs> um, I'm still chipping through Addie LaRue. Still really enjoying it. Like I said, it's like um, so it's like it's a good slow burn, uh. But I'm hoping to finish it this week and can hopefully start on get back to Sarah J. Moss. I also want to read uh the Thorn of Glass series, which I have not read yet. So it's funny. No, I have a lot to read. So. I like A Court of Thorn and Roses. My absolute favorite book by her is A Court of Silver Flames. Mm -hmm. Uh, I but overall, as far as like writing skill character development interesting points of plot throne of glass is her favorite is my favorite of hers which is yeah. her first so like the more she writes the less i like it but nesta <laughs> in a court of silver flames had very especially with the whole like mask thing she had very alien vibes in some places and i loved it I'm, I'm very interested to see what you think of throne of glass yeah 
they're smaller books. They're not like the chunks that like, like I, when I when I bought the Sky and Breath book, I was like, holy fuck, man! Like it's it's, it's a thick. melee weapon. Yeah, it is. It's it's. I'm not gonna be reading that when I go to bed at night because the first you know. Throne of Glass book is 415 pages, and which I have a paperback copy of it. I should just send you. Uh, and then House of Sky and Breath is. Holy shit balls, 807 pages. Okay. So yeah, this is just her. That's just her. Well, I mean, right. Throne Great of Glass chunks. is literally half the size of House of Sky and Breath. Uh, for reference, yeah. uh, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows is only 316 pages. Um, and Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, which is the wait, fourth, fourth it's the fourth book. Order of the Phoenix is the longest one. I'm thinking Goblet of Fire was the longest. It's not. Uh, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix is 412 pages so sarah j moss's shorter books are the size of the largest harry potter book mm. the audiobook is 27 hours I'm, I'm playing with myself to see how much quilt i can get done in 27 hours <laughs> you know maybe a whole one maybe <laughs> that'd be neat that would be neat what is your vice this week so i was raised in a weird backwards ass cult that didn't let people have fun and didn't let people listen to music and i got in trouble a lot for listening to music anyway and when i got out of the cult uh i just listened to everything i still listen to a little bit of everything one of my friends grew up in the same cult recently left came out of the closet they're like a decade older than me and they're having a really hard time as one Mm -hmm. would leaving a cult depression all this other shit and i was like dude just put on Black Parade, sit in your car, and be sad. Like, it's okay to be sad for a while. You don't have to fight yep. against it. Just sit in your car and be sad and listen to emo music. That is why emo music exists. Yes. <laughs> and uh, he didn't know what emo music was. <gasps> because he was in the cult, and he was a creature, yeah. and he was a good boy. So I made him a playlist called All the Emo Kids Are Screaming in Their Cars After Work, because we all did. <laughs> So amazing. I would love to see this playlist. I will send it to you. Um, Please. So I have been listening to that a lot this week. And then I found this YouTube channel, probably because I was watching too many My Chem and Yellow Card videos, called, what's the dude's name? The dude's name is Matt something. Shit. Uh, do do do. Oh, no. Matt Cutshaw. Matt Cutshaw. Thank you. I knew I sent you a link. Um, yes. Matt Cutshaw. And um, his channel isn't called Emo's Not Dead, but it's the hashtag is Emo's Not Dead. And they have an Emo's Not Dead cruise happening in November of this year, which is unfortunately already sold out. Uh, and it's it, he just the the YouTube channel is basically like him going through his regular life, uh, just like a total suburban normie. And then something will happen where his like beautiful blonde wife will say something and he'll just turn into emo and start <laughs> singing. And they've had like the lead singers of a bunch of emo bands in a lot of these movies or movies, uh, a lot of these videos. And it's just, it's so funny. It's so funny yeah. and cathartic. Yeah. And also I'm still listening to all the emo kids are screaming in their cars after work because we did. <laughs> yep yep <laughs> so that's the emo music embracing my youth is is, yes. is my advice for this week what's yours uh so i've also kind of taken a trip into past things well um uh, downton abbey nice i started watching again i started from the beginning because i got through like two and a half seasons and then i don't know just life changed and I didn't, I just kind of got out of it. And then, like, I think I moved or something. Maybe I was living with my parents at the time. I I don't remember exactly the details, but life changed. I got disconnected from it. And then it became one of those things where it was too much to catch up on. And I was just like, I can't do it right now. Mm -hmm. But now I have access to BritBox and all six seasons are on BritBox and I don't have to wait I could just binge watch them yes! and they are really good. So anyway, have you seen them? No, I haven't because I know once I watch them, it's going to be a hell of a commitment. 
<laughs> it's so good because like you get the it's kind of like it's got some Bridgerton vibes, but like it also follows the lives of not only the like the people that like the owners of the house it also follows like the servants and so you see the lives of the servants and that which are almost always more interesting they are and it's just really cool like to think about how life was back then and it starts with the sinking of the like it's 19 is it 1912 the sinking of the titanic Uh uh-huh that's right i think so it starts right at like the 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 Titanic sinks, and then like what that the people that were on the Titanic, how that impacts this family, and it's it's really cool. And I huh. know that it goes into like um, each season kind of pushes you forward because I know when I stopped watching, they were like in the nineteen twenties, I think, because one of the main characters was like in a flapper dress, and I was like, fuck yeah, nice. So yeah, nice, yeah. That's a good so, advice. It is a good advice. Emo yeah. music in Downton Abbey sounds like sounds like good a really good junk night food. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think that's it for this episode. Before yep. I I I do another thing that gets us way off course. Uh, <laughs> you can find us online at Paper and Vices on Insta, Twitter, Facebook, and dot com. You can email us, Lee at paperandvices.com or Victoria at paperandvices.com. And we have a Patreon where you can get stickers and shiny things. And the parts of this episode that we cut because I was, uh, hmm. Well, yeah, those parts. (laughs) In the meantime, don't be an asshole. Smoke a joint and take care of yourself. This has been a production of Paper and Vices, LLC. Copyright 2022. This episode is presented for entertainment purposes only, and any advice should only be pursued within the legal boundaries, common sense, and personal responsibility of each person. Please check your local laws and do not engage in any form of bitchassery. The views and opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the individual hosts and guests only, and do not in any way represent the views of Paper and Vices, LLC, nor any named persons, nor should they be considered personal, medical, or legal advice. Previous episodes and other commentary can be found at paperandvices.com and patreon.com slash paperandvices.